This week on ANN, Adra responds after Cyclone Fani devastates areas of India and Bangladesh. Oakwood University's Touring Choir is involved in a fiery bus accident. And Ted N.C. Wilson wraps up his tour of South America in Peru. These stories and more coming up. Thank you so much for joining us this week. After making landfall in the eastern state of Odisha, India, Cyclone Fani continued its path into Bangladesh on Saturday, May 4th, destroying thousands of households and leaving towns submerged under floodwaters. The Cyclone Fani is said to be the strongest typhoon to hit these two countries in the last five years. After hitting land on Friday, India's meteorological, meteorological department said Fani lost power and was da downgraded to a depression. Local reports in Bangladesh have said more than a dozen people died and 63 people were injured. More than one million people were moved to evacuation sites to avoid higher casualties. Adventists in Bangladesh are working through the Adventist Development and Relief Agency in Bangladesh to help those impacted by the storm. Days prior to Cyclone's landfall, Adra Bangladesh began monitoring the situation and the team began preparing for rapid assessment in order to respond immediately to the cyclone. Adra Bangladesh is working closely with local government units, nonprofit organizations, food security clusters, shelter clusters, and churches to identify the immediate and greatest needs of those impacted. That's right. Basic needs such as ready to eat food, makeshift shelters bedding, water, medicine, and clothes are greatly needed for distribution. You can learn more about Adra Bangladesh, about what Adra Bangladesh is doing after Cyclone Fani and how you can get involved at adrabangladesh.org or at adra.org. The Oakwood University Aeolian's touring choir was involved in a fiery bus accident just hours before a scheduled performance in San Francisco, California. According to a press release from Oakwood University, the accident occurred around 12.25 a.m. Pacific Standard Time on May 4th as students traveled from the San Francisco airport to the hotel accommodations. Additional news sources revealed that a broken down SUV in the road triggered the accident as drivers swerved to avoid colliding with the vehicle. One car slammed into the back of the bus, killing the driver, and burst into flames. The fire then spread to the tour bus. Fortunately, students and staff were able to get out before the entire frame was engulfed, destroying all of their personal belongings. Emergency response teams checked the students and staff at the scene, and no life-threatening injuries were reported. Choir director Jason Ferdinand shares that they were shaken up very much so, but thankful we lost things and not lives. The choir did not allow the tragedy to keep them from sharing their talents. Later that day, they performed at the Philadelphia Adventist Church in San Francisco. The world-renowned Aeolian's choir has performed at the Kennedy Center and Carnegie Hall and won multiple choral competitions. For continued updates on this story, please visit Oakwood University's Facebook page, facebook.com slash Oakwood University. President of the Seventh-day Adventist World Church, Ted N.C. Wilson, rounded out his two-week trip to South America this week, where he met with Peru's congressional president, Daniel Salaveri. Salaveri presented Wilson with an official certificate for making a positive contribution to Peruvian society. Upon receiving the award, Wilson said the honor represents the commitment of faithful church members in Peru and around the world. Salaveri also gave a certificate to Ertan Kohler, president of the Adventist Church in South America. Pastor Kohler prayed for Salaveri and the country of Peru. The Adventist delegation then presented Salaveri and his team with copies of the church's 2019 missionary book, Hope for Today's Families, written by Willie and Elaine Oliver, directors of the Family Ministries Department of the Adventist World Church. The meeting took place on May 3, and that was a day before thousands of church members distributed two million copies of the book in Lima. Salaveri was among several politicians with whom Wilson met during a two-week trip through six countries of the South American division. He also shared Bible promises and prayer with Paraguay's vice president, a Brazilian governor, a Brazilian mayor, and the incoming mayors of Guayaquil, Ecuador, and another neighboring city. The trip mainly aimed to inspire church members to be faithful and to actively proclaim the three angels' messages of Revelation 14, that Jesus is coming soon. The Prime Minister of St. Vincent and the Grenadines praised the work of the Seventh-day Adventist Church during a church inaugural ceremony 
at his new headquarters office in Kingston, St. Vincent. The Honorable Ralph Gonsalves praised the dedicated work of the church in education and nurturing spiritual and moral values. He also expressed admiration for the work Adventist pastors carry out and thanked outstanding church members who served in his government, including Deputy Prime Minister Sir Louis Straker, Attorney General Judith Jones Morgan, and the Parliamentary Secretary in the Ministry of Education, Deborah Charles. To accommodate the Adventist work in the government, Gonsalves ends meetings early on Fridays before sunset and refrains from calling on his deputy prime minister during the hours of the Sabbath. There are more than 15,900 Seventh-day Adventists in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, making it the largest denomination on the islands. The church there is organized as the mission field, which oversees 42 churches and congregations, a dental clinic, and five primary and secondary schools. The new facility was purchased from a commercial enterprise through a loan by the Caribbean Union and a sizable donation by a church member donor. The two-floor renovated facility includes offices, a boardroom, a large auditorium with two balconies that can seat up to 450 persons, and a large basement. To learn more about the Seventh-day Adventist Church in St. Vincent and the Granadines' mission, its initiatives, and its activities, visit svgadventist.org. The 2019 Pathfinder Bible Experience, or PBE, Division Finals on April 26 and 27 drew a record-breaking 210 teams to Rockford, Illinois, located nearly 100 miles northwest of Chicago in the United States. This was the first time the P in PBE's history that more than 200 teams participated in the division level testing. The Adventist Church in North America sent this report. The 2019 Pathfinder Bible Experience Division Finals were held on April 27 in Rockford, Illinois. This was the first time in PBE's history that more than 200 teams participated in the division level testing. Approximately 3,500 people filled Rockford Valley Community College Sports Complex. This high turnout shocked organizers. This year we thought that we were going to get less clubs just because of the fact that this year, 2019, we have Oshkosh, Pathfinder, you know, Campari. So in our minds, we were thinking, you know what, we got people that are saving for that. They're not going to pay to come here and also Oshkosh. But the amazing thing that happened is that we broke the barrier, we, we had the biggest ever Pathfinder Bible experience, and we're amazed at what the parents and, and people do for the Word of God for this event, something like testing on the Bible. Since 2012, the journey to the PBE division level has been a four-step process. The teams, which are comprised of up to six people, are first chosen by their clubs to compete in their local districts after months of Bible study and memorization. Those who score within 90% of the highest score advance to the conference level. The same pattern continues through the union level all the way to the division. The fun part about it is like memorizing and actually, um, you know, having fun with the fr your friends and everything. So that's like my favorite part. Well, we study so much that we don't really worry. We don't have to stress about the questions because we already know them. Like if you study for these type of competitions, and you're prepared, you shouldn't really be. I'm not worried, at least, although some people are, but I'm not worried because I'm confident in the hours and the time that I put into studying the Word of God. Question number 17 for four points. According to Luke 24, 5 and 6, fill in the blanks. Why the teams were asked 90 questions based on the book of Luke. 155 teams scored within 90% of the highest score and were awarded first place. Nine NAD unions were represented, along with an unprecedented 43 teams from conferences and missions within the British Union. With groundbreaking attendance came the challenges of accommodating sizable numbers. To address this and help expand the experience beyond the Pathfinders, NAD Youth Director Tracy Wood and Associate Director Vandy and Griffin hosted an on-site testing center for parents and supporters. This allowed them to answer the same questions presented to the Pathfinders. They were also able to watch the live stream of the testing. You see, Pathfinder Bible Experience is an event that changes lives. Could remember if they, they, they could remember only one lesson 
they can remember they can always come back to the Father. And that's, that's the book of Luke, that's the gospel, that's the story of salvation, that's Jesus Christ sacrificing himself so that we can come back to him. And now we have the conclusion of the story brought to us from the Euro-Asia region of the Adventist Church. After an injury forced Leonid to leave the army, he developed vision problems and went completely blind. He had hit rock bottom and didn't know where to turn until he heard a program on Hope Radio in the Ukraine. The Adventist Church in Euro-Asia sent this report. Не звернувши увагу на слова з радіо приймача, Леонід ліг спати. Прокинувши зранку, він усвідомлював, що, можливо, це останній день його життя. Раптом Леонід згадав номер, який напередодні пролунав по радіо. Чоловік, не гаючи часу, взяв до рук телефон і набрав номер по пам'яті. На іншому кінці дроту підняли слухавку. Пролунав доброзичливий голос, і Леонід зрозумів, що тут йому раді допомогти. У слухавку він вилив весь біль та розповів про свої жахливі наміри. Чоловіка вислухали та запевнили, що скоро зателефонують. Ну, п'ять минут пройшло десь. Мені дзвонок, він представляється. Я пастор, Воротканіч Міша. У вас проблеми? Розкажіть мені про них. Я почав йому розповідати. Я прийняв рішення вбрати цих людей або вбрати себе з цієї життя. Він мені спокійно, ласково так говорить. За вашу життя вже віддали. Зараз ваша і моя задача – вашу життя спасти. Де ви знаходитесь, я к вам приїду. І він до мене приїхав. Поговорили. І він мене забрав, Міша, в нову каховку. Церковь. Сказали, если тебе негде жить, мы тебе дадим жилье, будешь жить в церкви. Такой теплоты, такого отношения ко мне, ко мне, я еще не видел. Мне кажется, что роднее место, прекраснее, ласковей в моей жизни не было никогда. И вот я адвентист. Все в жизни человека ставало на свои места. Сгодом, брати и сестры, Познайомили Леоніда з Ларисою. Вони зрозуміли, що їх зустріч була запланована на небеса. Жінка мешкала у сусідньому місті, проте їй з Леонідом все ж вдавалося бачитися час від часу. З моменту таких зустрічей і теплого спілкування їх серця наповнювало щастя та невимовна вдячність Богові. Через деякий час закохані одружилися, про що ні на мить не пошкодували. Я щаслива, я благодарю Господа, що я не одна, що у мене є друг, у мене є допомогник, у мене є захисник, у мене є любимий чоловік, якого я дуже люблю. Сказати, що мені Господь спасть життя, мабуть, це мало. Це безцінно. Я не можу це виразити, що він зробив для мене. Він мені дав все. Він мені дав життя. Він мені дав сім'ю. Я хочу пожелати зрителям, які мене побачать, візьміть мій пример за яку-то основу. Якщо вам буде дуже важко, услышьте мої слова. Обратитесь туди, куди обращався я. Це або радіо «Надія», або телеканал «Надія». Ідіть до Богу. Это единственный, кто может вам помочь. Больше в этом мире, если вы одни и нуждаетесь в помощи, вам никто не поможет. Next, a man in Brazil goes to church and gets a big surprise. We'll be right back after the break. Welcome back. It was another common Saturday service for retired Geraldo Quirino, a member of the Adventist Church in Espiritu Santo, Brazil. Quirino could never have imagined that an unexpected visit would change his day. The Adventist Church in South America sent this report. We were still at the beginning of the church, and there was a family in Calapébus who knew the church. But we were still with the feet firm in the church, and it depended on the biblical studies. 
Então fui informado que essa pessoa precisava de estudo bíblico, eu colhei a pessoa e ela se interessou em fazer o estudo bíblico e, eu comece... e aí começamos o estudo bíblico. E aí todo sábado à tarde eu ia lá. Só que essa família veio da Bahia. Por um motivo ou outro teve que voltar para a Bahia. Aí eles voltaram para a Bahia. Isso o tempo passou, ela assistiu com a gente. Não decidiu se é o batismo na época, mas foi embora. E quando foi agora, uma semana atrás, eu tive uma surpresa muito assim... Como é que eu diria? Que me gratificou muito, muito gratificante, né? E chegou, o Igor chegou na igreja, aquele garotinho que assistia, ficava em volta ali enquanto estudava com a mãe dele, chegou lá e perguntou quem era o seu Geraldo. Quem é o irmão Geraldo aqui? Alguém, alguém botou aquele lá. Aí ele foi e falou, o senhor o que é irmão Geraldo? É. Eu preciso falar com o senhor. Mas aqui mesmo? Não, aqui fora. Ele me chamou lá fora e falou assim, o senhor se lembra de mim? Eu falei, não me lembro. Aí ele falou assim, eu sou filho de Margarete. Eu falei, será que é uma que eu estudei a Bíblia, que dei estudo bíblico para ela? Aí ele falou assim, é a minha mãe. É que muitas vezes a gente acha que um contato missionário com alguém vai surtir efeito logo ali um dia, um mês, é, um ano depois. Mas muitas vezes aquela semente que a gente deixa ali com a pessoa, por mais que no momento não, não faça sentido, por mais que a pessoa não a entenda no momento, mas sempre lá na frente, aquilo ali no coração da pessoa, o Espírito Santo usa aquela semente que foi deixada ali para poder é, fazer com que venha florescer e fazer com que venha dar frutos até que nem a própria pessoa tinha noção assim de que poderia dar. Com essas pessoas que nós estudamos a Bíblia, mostrando para ela o caminho do céu, né, e o processo da salvação, o porquê Jesus morreu aqui, veio aqui e morreu, né, e o prazer que a gente tem em é saber que as pessoas, um dia encontraremos com as pessoas, se não encontrarmos aqui na Terra, mas quando Jesus voltar, lá na Nova Jerusalém, lá na eternidade. Recently, young people from the Emmanuel Adventist community in Kahul, Moldova, spent the day doing work in their community. Along with local pastor Abel Kavrashuk, the young people passed out gifts and food to several low-income families in Kahul, as well as nearby villages. The project was carried out in cooperation with the Kahul Police Station. A total of 30 children received parcels of kindness, lovingly prepared by members of the Emmanuel Church. Church members also purchased gifts for the children along with clothing and school supplies. Coming up, Emily Mastrapa tells us about some new tools Instagram has to help raise money. But up next, Adventist Mission has a story about a global mission pioneer in New Delhi. We may look, pray, read, think, worship, sing, and share differently, but we all look forward to the Sabbath. And we all look forward to the future when Jesus will come again. With this message in mind, we arrived at a core component for a new identity system, the creation grid, a simple seven column structure for layout. The grid is a reference both to the prophetic timeline as well as to the creation week that culminated in the seventh day Sabbath. Regardless of what or where you are designing, you can always find information to help you communicate that we are all Seventh day Adventists. Welcome back. When a disagreement about valuable land in New Delhi can't be settled, a global mission pioneer is threatened but offers to take care of the property until there is a resolution. Adventist Mission has more. In New Delhi, India, an angry group ordered the Seventh-day Adventist missionaries to leave their neighborhood. The missionaries wanted to establish the first Adventist church here, but there was a dispute over rights to the plot of land. It wasn't that they disliked the Adventist. Hoping to resolve the conflict, church leadership sent a global mission pioneer named Suleiman to this unentered area. Pioneer Suleiman was in for a challenge. There are millions of people in New Delhi who don't know Jesus yet, and in this crowded city, every piece of land is valuable. 
He knew the group claiming ownership rights wouldn't give up the property without a fight. But as a global mission pioneer, Suleiman not only hoped to resolve the conflict, he also planned to share the love of Jesus and eventually start a new group of believers. When Suleiman arrived, he and his family received serious threats. They told me, your church won't save you. You better leave the property or we will get even with you. So the pioneer asked God for wisdom on how best to deal with the escalating conflict. Then he spoke with the angry men who were threatening to beat him. I am here to serve. If you chase me, where will I go? Your conflict is with my administration. Let me stay here. If the property is deeded to you, at least someone is taking care of the property while this matter gets resolved. The men thought this was a reasonable proposition, so they allowed pioneer Suleiman to stay, but he couldn't make any changes to the property. Faced with no choice, the pioneer agreed. Suleiman and his wife got to know the surrounding community. They visited neighbors and developed friendships that allowed them to share their faith. By God's grace, people opened up to the gospel and wanted to hear more about Jesus. One day, they met Susma, the wife of a man who was raised Seventh-day Adventist. Susma and the pioneer's wife became good friends, cooking together and sharing life experiences. Susma increasingly admired the Adventist. She saw that they were humble people who lived a simple life. The pioneer's wife asked Susma if she would be interested to learn more about the Bible, and she agreed. So Suleiman and his wife began to teach Susma about God. My husband was an Adventist, but I didn't know much about this church. I didn't even know anything before marrying into an Adventist family. But after the pioneer arrived, I came to know more about Jesus and the Adventist Church. Please pray for my husband. He doesn't want to come to church even though he was an Adventist from childhood. Today, because Suleiman mingled with the people showing Christ's love, this property is formally deeded to the Seventh-day Adventist Church in India. There are approximately 25 regular members who worship here every Sabbath. As this congregation grows, he continues to pray for wisdom. Please pray for Suleiman despite the challenges he faces. Pray too for frontline mission work in unentered areas, among major world religions, and in urban areas. Thank you for your support of Global Mission. You can watch this or other mission stories online by visiting AdventistMission.org, then click on videos at the top. Many of us use Instagram to share information and photos of our ministry. But did you know you can now raise money through the social media platform? Emily Mastrapa has more. Instagram has made it much easier to raise money for your favorite nonprofits. The platform has introduced a donation sticker for stories, and it even directly links to nonprofit groups' accounts. In case you're not familiar with it, Instagram is an app where you can share pictures and videos publicly or privately. Instagram Stories allows users to take pictures or videos, add effects or stickers, and put them up on their story. The story expires after 24 hours. To use the donation feature, open the Instagram camera and take or upload a photo. Then, tap on the sticker icon and select the donation sticker from the tray. Then, you can choose a nonprofit to support and customize the fundraiser using the built-in creative tools. Viewers can click directly from the post and then contribute. You can see how much you've raised by swiping up on the story. Instagram has stated that 100% of the money raised goes to the nonprofit being supported. Currently, the feature is only available in the United States. Facebook also has a feature like this called fundraisers. You can create a fundraiser to raise money for yourself or for someone else or for another cause that's important to you. There are also a lot of nonprofit organizations that you can choose from for your fundraiser. 
the fundraiser is public and will show up on your feed. People can see how much you are trying to raise and then they can see how close you are to reaching your goal. So if there's a cause that you are passionate about or a nonprofit that you want to support, try out these ways to raise money on social media. And finally for today's episode, let's turn to Ashley Chisholm for a look at Adventist history. This week, we hear about what happens when a family faithfully serves the Lord. Welcome to This Week in Adventist History. On May 3rd, 1902, Mary Colby Chapman died at age 71. J.N. Loughborough, who'd known Mary for 34 years, wrote of her, Faithful to the last, she sweetly sleeps in Jesus. Mary and her family certainly epitomized long-term, quiet faithfulness. In 1868, while attending meetings conducted by Loughborough, Mary and her husband Thomas became some of the very first people to become Seventh-day Adventists in Petaluma, California, and they became founding members of the Petaluma Seventh-day Adventist Church, which still exists today. Yet the Chapman's influence spread beyond their own family and Petaluma. Their oldest son, Edwin, began working for the Pacific Press Association at the age of 19, working his way up to the position of secretary and treasurer of the association. And he eventually also worked as a treasurer and secretary for the Pacific Union Conference and the California Conference. You see him here at the time of his death in 1908. The Chapman's next child, Harry, served in various local church roles, elder, deacon, and church treasurer in the Petaluma and Sanitarium California churches. Another son, Elliot, and his wife, Cora, traveled to Hawaii and Tahiti as part of the missionary ship Pitcairn's second voyage and worked at Avondale College. Phoebe, one of their daughters, spent time both working at both Loma Linda Sanitarium and White Memorial Hospital. In just one Adventist family, seen here in a photo from 1900, we can see the various ministries of the Seventh-day Adventist Church embodied. Education, evangelism, medical work, and publishing. And the Chapman's consistent day-to-day -day practice of lived faith are in many ways representative of the stories we can find in Adventist history, in this week or any other. Thanks for watching ANN. Join us next week for more news from the headquarters of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. We love to hear from you. So send us your feedback and tell us how your church is making a difference in its community. Be sure to capture plenty of video footage and photos, then write up a summary of the event's important details. And feel free to send us full video reports as well. You can reach us by sending an email to annvideo11 at gmail.com. Before we say goodbye, here's some good news from the book of 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 23. The passage says, O Lord God of Israel, there is no God like you in heaven above or on earth beneath keeping covenant and showing steadfast love to, his, to your servants who walk before you with all their heart. And that's our program this week. And remember, you can always visit news.adventist.org for daily news and videos. Until next time, God bless. Take care.